Alright, so welcome everybody. You're watching the Premier League. My name is Trifer Man. This is Season 3 of the Premier League. Moscow 5 versus... Versus Shakira. This is Game 1 in a best of 3 series. Moscow 5, of course, from CIS. Very aggressive team. Pretty new lineup. Got a couple of old faces there, but after the TI2, most players were sort of shuffled around. Bit of deck shuffling happening there. And Shakira. Now, it's a few familiar faces to Shakira, but they are a relatively untested team, to be dead honest. They haven't had the best of results. So hopefully they can make something happen here. But just going through these bands quickly, we do have Lycan and Dark Sea Band, two very familiar faces, and a couple of nerfs incoming for them for 6.75. Also, Naga Siren being banned, Templar Assassin managing to make the band pool, and this is a hero that's been getting banned quite frequently at the moment. Of course, the Disruptor. Now, I believe Empire was very... I think it was... That's right, it was Empire, and no, no it was Virtus Pro. They were banning Disruptor I against Moscow 5 non-stop, and I think it was possibly... Oh no, it was Moscow 5 banning it against Virtus Pro. One of those teams was very scared about a particular... It was re re Disruptor was a bit of a respect ban during that series. Moscow 5 versus Virtus Pro, and it just came down to the fact that he was getting first banned every single time because they were very, very scared about it. But I think, I think honestly, he's not used enough in European slash North American games. He is a very powerful hero, and he gets used fairly frequently by the Asian teams, mostly the Chinese. The Chinese love their Disruptor. He's very powerful. His connect force field, and I believe they're also changing things up as well. He's got a bit of a buff coming down. The, of course, the force staff is a bit of a nuisance for him. But of course, it will prevent him from being able to force staff out of that, so it will be quite irritating for heroes trapped inside it. So we'll see if that change really makes much of a difference. But as it is, he's got plenty of control, and Glimpse is just such a fantastic setup tool. Catches a lot of players out of out of position and then allows the team to allows his teammates just to jump on them and single them out very quickly. But the first pick, Invoker. Now this leaves oh well they're gonna go straight for a morphing because I was gonna say they could possibly pick up some pushes like Chen and or Chen and or Furion or they could go for the CK and Wisp combo. Of course Chaos Knight and Wisp have been rather particularly common lately. And it's a very powerful combo, a very aggressive combo that gets picked up a lot. Lashrak, they're going to be picked up. Morphling, a very powerful hero. And Lashrak is just an all-rounder, can do just about anything. Support, he supports well. He can become a semi-carry and also pushes nicely. So he can play very aggressively. A lot of firepower involved in that hero. The double pick. Ooh. Shakira decides, you know what, let's go for our own late game. They pick up the anti-mage. They've also grabbed up Chen as well. So they've got a lot of resilience in the form of Chen. Now this will... This, of course, Chen has to jungle initially. Now, jungling does give you a lot of extra money going into the mid-game. A lot of extra gold, a lot of extra money in this mid-game. But the issue is, straight up, initially, it gives you a weaker lane set. Now, this isn't so bad if you're going for a tri-lane versus... If you're going for a tri-lane, or sort of a dual lane and a jungler against a suicide solo, that's not such a big issue then. But if you're going, if you're leaving a dual lane or a solo versus an aggressive tri-lane, it becomes very, very painful. Or if you see a 2-2-1 two, two, setup, that can also be quite problematic as well. It can weaken two other lanes. But of course, Chen in the mid-game is quite powerful, and of course his teleport saves are huge, and he gives he brings a lot of attrition to the table. It makes a hero like Anti-Mage, who's already difficult to kill, even harder. Same for Invoker. Invoker is a very slippery hero as well, when played correctly. Enchantress, though. Being grabbed up by Moscow 5, that is going to be their sort of counter to Chen. Chen and Enchantress, two of the better junglers in the game, can get very aggressive. Go for those two to four minute towers, can tear them down with those creeps. Provided they've got a bit of extra firepower, although Chen obviously unlikely to be doing that just because they're going to have an anti-mage in the lane. Whereas Enchantress, when she's backed up by something like Lashrak, can tear down towers extremely quickly. Now the question is, uh, is Morphling going to wind up as a solo mid, or will he be getting farmed as a hard carry in the safe lane? And we've seen Morphling, he can do a lot of ganking in the mid-game, especially if he goes for that straight-up shotgun build. But it depends how Moscow 5 want to play this. He didn't want the band, so Shakira have banned off Night Stalker and Chaos Knight. I think two very solid bands. If Morphling was going to be run in the solo mid-roll, it could really, it really would have opened things up for a Chaos Knight and Stadler Shrak combo. Two great stuns there to lock down a hero and pick him off. And then, of course, Enchantress can follow up with Lashrak. And once they gank a hero or two, they can quite easily push down towers. Now, Venomancer has been banned by Moscow 5. They've already got their sort of support. I think Lashrak in this case is probably going to be a support. Enchantress is going to be the soft support. So they've banned off, they've banned off the Venomancer, who's pretty good at counter-pushing and snow around annoying support hero, which at the moment, Shakira, they could do with a second support hero. So a very solid ban there from them. They might even pick up another one. I should also call out Rubik being banned as well. Rubik has been, he's really become the most, the biggest A-grade support hero at the moment. It isn't a jungle like Chen or Enchantress. He's probably the best and most popular support right now. Lich is actually being banned. Interesting decision there. Don't see him all that much. 
Still a decent hero, but he's just not that common to pick anymore. Used to be quite common as a whole Lich and Anti-Mage dual mid combo, but really fell out of favor. After I think it was about after February, January, really didn't see him getting picked up much anymore. Sort of started getting phased out for stuff like, oh, well, basically teams started picking up stuff like Windrunner, Lashrak, yeah, Crystal Maiden a lot more often. And then we go Windrunner actually being picked up as well, so that's probably going to be their suicide. So I expect Anti-Mage and another support to be, or another support to be picked up to pair with Anti-Mage. They'll probably go in the safe lane. Invoker likely to take the mid, Chen of course, Jungling, and then Windrunner taking that suicide slot. Or they could mix things up if they pick a support like that Lich was going to be picked up. They could have thrown him dual mid with Anti-Mage, thrown Invoker in the safe lane, and then had Windrunner just run around in the suicide solo. Of course, Windrunner, well, you know, Invoker has been used as a suicide solo before, but for all I know, Windrunner could be taking a safe lane or a solo mid. Shakira's lineup is still pretty flexible. Broodmother, though, the next pick for Moscow 5. And that's, well, it depends where they want to put her, but she's a very solid suicide solo, and she will be able, most likely able to handle the pressure being put out by Anti-Mage Chen plus whoever they send down there. Chen obviously going to be jungling a fair bit, so Broodmother, as long as she, as long as they send her, give her some counter wards straight up, or if she doesn't get counter warded initially, she should be relatively safe. And of course, she does have the ability to knock down those trees, so it's relatively hard to jump out of the jungle and gank her, because one of the things you'll see Broodmother do is straight away go down to her bottom lane, and then just sh knock down those trees to give line of sight, so it's very difficult to jump in behind her. Resolve time. And yes, this is not a normal lineup. It's calculus, as you can see there, with a stand-in in his name, he will be just filling in. Shakira haven't quite uh, locked down their lineup yet, so it is subject to change still. So we'll see in the coming weeks who they decide to go with as a permanent member. One final pick, though, for Shakira. What will they go with? It's probably going to be some kind of support. Considering they're up against Broodmother, they could even go, they'd likely to be up against the Broodmother, so they could even go for melee support if they felt Crystal like it, but Maiden. they're going to go with the Crystal Maiden, so that's Dying relatively Maiden. solid, especially if they can lock, if they start off with some counter wards, if they play it right, they can put a lot of pressure on that Broodmother, like Crystal Maiden's lockdown and her nukes are quite frustrating as well, and just having some AoE is always nice to deal with the Broodlings as well, but she can lock down the Broodmother and allow Chen to get in range of his creep, especially if he goes for an early smoke, he could quite well lock down the Broodmother. But honestly, I would prefer to see him go mid with those early smokes because Crystal Maiden by herself, with, with Andy Mage as well to back her up, they should be able to handle the Broodmother if they do go with the early counter wards. Five now, one last pick minions. for Moscow 5, and I think they're probably... If, if It depends whether or not they're going with the Morphling as the solo mid. If Morphling goes solo mid, they'll be looking for a safe lane hero. If Morphling's in the safe lane, they'll be looking for a solo mid hero. So it comes down to their strategy here, what they want to abuse. And if they're expecting the Invoker mid, they could do with a very, very strong Tide solo Hunter. mid. More things are pretty decent. Maybe they're going to pick up the Tide Hunter case. Ooh. Tide Hunter. I have seen solo mid Tide Hunter. It's definitely a possibility. So we'll see how this one goes down. I have seen to Tide Hunter as a solo mid. It is definitely a possibility. At the same time, if Morphling's going to be taking that uh, safe lane, it could be Tynum supporting Lashrak Solomid. That's, again, another possibility. So it depends on Moscow 5 they want to run this. They have got quite a few options up their sleeve still. Then It's one of the nice things about picking up a flexible lineup. You can do unpredictable things. And even if you, if you scout out your opponent's lanes and you decide, you know what, that's not going to work, you can switch things up on the fly. I've got to say, from lineups here, though, I do currently like... I do currently like Moscow Fire's lineup a little bit more, just because I feel, especially Morphling with a shotgun build, they can exert more mid-game pressure. If Morphling goes for that shotgun build, they've got quite a few vulnerable heroes. Morphling, if he picks off Chen straight away at the start of the fight, or if they pick off Crystal Maiden, or even if they pick off the Windrunner, picking up a hero like that with a shotgun build is incredibly powerful. And they do have the early, they do have that really good early team fight capabilities with Tino with his Ravage, of course, the DPS that Lashrak can pop out as well is quite scary, and they can do a lot of nice split pushing as well. The Shrak can push a lane, they can put a lot of pressure on the top towers with the Shrak as well as Enchantress, and then try and draw trouble away from Broodmother's lane. And of course, if you draw attention away from Broodmother's lane, she can get out of control really quickly, or even just tear down a couple of towers to accelerate gold, and more importantly, move map, remove map control. Losing those early towers is quite painful, especially once your Broodmother gets her hands on a bit of early tower gold, starts inhabiting your jungle, infesting it, and chasing your heroes out of it. Just so hard to slow it down. Now I'm not quite sure what the pause here is for. Shark attacks as calculus. Oh, okay. I think somebody's managed to crash here. 
from Moscow 5. Staliana is struggling at the moment. Or possibly in the bathroom, I'm not sure. Who is the caster? I am Trumpet Man. This is a Smurf. You may have seen me before casting the Gigabyte Dota Masters or I think the, the International 2 as well. I was casting the group stage for that. Human attack. <laughs> Alright then, so while we're waiting, I might just call out the players. So, playing for Shakira on the Radiant side, we have Rise playing Shen, JT on Crystal Maiden, Shock Soksha playing Anti Mage, Pamphlet playing Invoker, and Calculus running the Windrunner. Now, it's on Moscow 5 on the Dire side, we have Solo running Enchantress, Dread playing the Shrax, Sedoi running the Broodmother, Nexus on Tidehunter, and Staliana should be playing. Who was the last hero there? Ah, Morphling, of course. Staliana will be playing the Morphling by the looks of things. Now, I should also mention there will be a short interview with the winner of this best of three at the end of the series. So stick around for that if you want to find out, just get a little bit of insight. And I will be fielding, I will be fielding viewer questions. So if you want to ask some questions towards the end, make sure you spam in the chat and I will try and put forward the most pertinent ones. Try not to ask crazy, I'm trying to ask, uh, we'll call them Sing Sing style questions. So we'll steer away from that, mostly go towards the more serious ones or just curious ones about player lifestyles or habitat, oh, habits, stuff like that, or even metagame stuff. I would prefer, I would prefer to avoid questions on, say, tactical peni. Who are the Radiant? They are Shakira. Now, Shakira, you'll notice there are a few players that you will recognize. It is a couple of new faces plus some old MTW players. And, uh, of course, a couple of stand-ins. I think Pamphlet is a stand-in... Actually, no, Pamphlet isn't a stand-in because he should have had his name changed to stand-in, like Calculus has here. Well, has he? He hasn't. If he's a stand-in, he should have had his name changed to stand-in, so I, I'm going to assume that Pamphlet is legit, and it's just for, forgot to put his Shakira tags on. Calculus, on the other hand, is a stand-in. He's not a regular player. They're still The last player, the fifth player for Shakira, is currently up in the air. They haven't quite solidified who they're going to run with. Okay, there we go. Staliana is back. Mm. <laughs> Alright, here we go. So the question is, alright, let's have a look at items now. That looks like... Tynan is saving for a few bit of cash. This looks like he might actually be the primary farmer. So it looks like we're going to have a Morphling mid. Broodmother taking the suicide solo, and in this case, yes, definitely. Tidehunter will actually be the primary farmer. Now in this case, he's going to act uh, like a bouncer. Like then bounce from a nightclub, he will. They're gonna try and get him farmed, get an early pipe on him or those kind of defensive items for the team. Just give his team a lot of effective health. They're gonna have him run up the front of the fight and just say, you know what? I'm gonna start beating on this town. We're gonna go up here with our creep as well. We'll send in the enchantress creep, the spylings. We'll. I'll stand at the front. We'll start knocking down this tower. And if you want to stop this, you've got to get past me to try and engage my team fights. And of course, he's got ravage, so he can just initiate with with that. If the radiant side try and push past, it's a very effective and painful strategy to try and deal with. And honestly, this, like I said, I liked Moscow Fire's lineup just because I had that mid-game power. Whereas on the other hand, Anti-Mage doesn't quite have the same mid-game. Ooh, Sedoi, uh, they're messing that up a little bit. And generally, when they do this, they want to knock down all the trees. Because right now, this is still giving a bit of room for Chen to approach unseen. And I don't know, he will be backing up anyway. And did they start off with counter wards? Yes, they did. And he doesn't have any counter. He doesn't have any blocking wards to go with him. Although Broodmother has been giving counter wards, so she's. It's going to become a battle of the wards. The it comes begins. down to who plays it a little bit better and who knocks out the other guy's ward first. That'll be a big deal there as to whether or not Broodmother gets early farm or not, or even manages to leech early experience at that rate. Yes, Chrome's the winner. We will be doing a short interview with the winner of this best of three series, one of the captains. So, if you've got any questions you want to think of? I want to ask, make sure you start getting your thinking caps on now. And in the mid lane, it will be Morphling versus the Invoker. Now Morphling, this is a pretty stock standard uh, build here. Basically, they don't go for waveform first. What they do is they open up with the Morph Agility. They open up with the Morph, oh, the Morph. And basically this gives, and the Morph a bit of extra agility. You see there, he's up to 34 agility base, down to 9 strength. And because he's not too worried about getting level 1 gank, he goes, you know what, let me just get all this extra damage to last hit with. 
And once it, once the mid gank is a little bit more dangerous, once Chen picks up a couple of levels, it looks like he might get smoke gank. Then Morphling is more likely to put a few.